So I'm almost finished wiring up this enclosure and I think it's starting to look really good. Um, I did actually come across quite a large problem though, so I thought I'd actually share that with you. Um, effectively, the breakout board has a differential line driver on it, and that controls the pulse and direction going to the servo drivers. So I've actually tested this part of the circuit on previous development boards, no problem. However, in this particular board, I'm having quite a few issues. Effectively, I would command a position on the servo drives, I'll ask it to go to a certain position. Sometimes it'll be absolutely fine. Other times, the server motor would jitter. So it would go there and it would start jittering. And it will probably do that quite violently. I've got a 1.8 kilowatt at the background over there. It's got a G clamp around it. And sometimes the whole bench would vibrate. So I suspect it's noise in this actual signal. So the differential signals that actually come out um, on the actual optocoupled board where everything is optocoupled in terms of inputs and outputs. The only thing that isn't is the differential line drivers, so the output pulse and direction, and also the analog inputs and outputs. So my intention was always to include an optocoupler on the differential line drivers, but not on this board. So it was gonna go on my next revision. Um, effectively, that was gonna probably help with noise immunity, also ground loops etc. So at the moment the actual um, differential line driver itself is running on the same ground that the actual motion controller is but this all of these are referenced to a different ground. I didn't think that would be a problem with the differential line signal. I know some communication protocols uh, actually require a ground for reference but um, in this instance, actually, these servo drivers use an internal optocoupler inside them. And I think the reason why they do that is because they can actually, or you can actually run them on a differential signal, or you can run them on a single-ended signal, either or. Anyway, I put the scope on it. I try to get everything to work, have a look at the scope, and I really can't pick up on maybe the noise issues that I'm actually, or the actual issues that you're seeing. Um, however, I do know that it isn't a problem with a cheap crappy cable. So if I plug this in between the actual board and the servo drivers, my problem seems to go away. So I suspect it may well be because the parasitic capacitance in these wires and the fact that it has a difference in impedance on these actual cables are suppressing some of that noise running through. So my fix over here is to include an optocoupler. So it's going to be including an optocoupler, which is something that I should have done in the beginning anyway. Um, and also I've worked out that I've also <laughs> wired in the high and the low on the actual differential side the wrong way around. So uh, that's probably adding to my problems. So I'm gonna flip those over. I've got the new board in order. It's gonna come, put the optic couplers in there um, and hopefully everything over here will be referenced to the same ground, therefore. And um, my problem, I'm hoping, will go away. Um, but time will tell. On the next revision, I've also included or included increased the clearances between all the tracks and the relays so then I can actually run a 240 volt system running through there and I think that's uh that complies to the IECC standards don't quote me on that I actually don't know the standards names but it's on my computer somewhere um and then I've also increased the clearances between the actual ground planes etc and some of the minor errors that I had before so hopefully when that board comes it should be plug and play and I am hoping it will just work. However, I've tested everything else. Um, to be honest with you, the servos and everything seem to work actually pretty much 95% of the time, but it's not a 5% and that 5% is something that I can't actually um, deal with. I need to change that board. So um, yeah, we'll go into it. I'll show you maybe the thing fired up, um, maybe show you some of the features. So I thought I'd quickly run through how this whole thing is wired up at the beginning. So I've got my input power coming through here. Uh, on um, a three core, so that's a neutral, live, and ground six millimeter square cable that's running through an MCB. So that's a forty amp MCB. I've worked out the peak current going through this should be um, should be thirty six amps. So a forty amp MCB is over here, and that runs in through this isolator switch. So the isolator switch is just wired in as such, and then the idea is just screw that in. So the idea is that comes through and then runs into my actual enclosure itself. So I've got the power coming in over here and then it's distributed 
to my actual 5 volts and 24 volts power sources and they, they plus supply power to my breakout board and then also my temperature controller which controls these fans which are over here but the actual power to the drives they only go on when the actual software Mac 3 starts up and then that activates that relay through the charge pump signal which in turn activates that relay which you know supplies the live or switches the live to these um, effectively they're like uh, contact terminal blocks or terminal blocks over here and then that supplies the power to all the drivers so I'll go ahead and I'll turn that on and I'll show you so you can see that lights up um, and then I've got no power to the drive until I actually turn the software on so I've got the enclosure all fired up but I don't have Mac 3 actually running so if I go ahead and open Mac 3 what it's going to do it's going to send a charge pump signal to the motion controller and thus turn on the main contactor and you can see it just fired everything up so at the moment I just need to set the kernel speed to 400 kilohertz and yep everything's fine so when I click reset you can see my enable lights on my servo drivers all go on um, and then I can control my accesses so I've got my e-stop all wired in so if I go ahead and hit that it's an active low so you can see the blue light just went off and then it's just shoved Mac 3 in the reset mode. There's no, I can't reset Mac 3 because obviously the e-stop is connected but um, if I unclick it I can go ahead and do that. The nice thing about using the charge pump I guess is if I do have an error, so example the servo drivers and especially this over here, this um, stepper motor, this closed loop stepper motor, um, it can't be reset without cycling the power off so all I need to do is I need to close Mac 3 and then I need to start it up again and it will in turn shut the power on and off. So I've got that done. I can also show you a little bit of the safety circuit. So effectively what it will do is if I reset that and control kernel speed. So what I can do is I can um, trick that stepper driver to effectively see an error. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go to motor tuning and then I'm going to go to my z-axis and then I'm going to increase the velocity beyond the, beyond the response of that actual stepper motor. So effectively I'm going to command a certain velocity, um, the stepper motor is going to try to execute upon that, it's going to find that it actually can't because um, the inertia of the system doesn't allow it to do so and then it's going to send a signal back from the encoder saying sorry I haven't come to the desired position and then it's going to say oh sorry I've got an error because I can't execute that in the time that you want me to do it. And then you're going to see an error light come on here and then you're going to see all the enable signals go off because effectively in hardware the safety circuit is sending a signal to all of these drivers saying stop I've got an error. And then it sends a signal to Mac3 saying I've also got an error. So we'll go ahead and do that. I will go ahead and I'll set the velocity enormously high that it can't execute on that. Click OK and then we can go ahead and execute on that. So, and then you can see the light over here changed. So it, you may have seen it, it's gone to red. Um, what it's done is it's turned on the red light. Um, So you can see it flashing now. So there you go, it's activated, it's saying I've got an error. Um, the actual red light on the actual breakout board is on, saying I've got an error. Um, and then all the servo drivers, which you can't see, are also saying the same thing, I've got an error. So I can't reset that error at the moment. I can click reset, but nothing's actually gonna happen because the actual board itself is saying, sorry, you've got a hardware error, you need to fix that. So in this instance, all I need to do is I can close Mac 3. It will turn the power off to the drives. That over there will cycle on and off. So I can open that again. Got power, I've reset the actual error itself. Uh, and then I can go ahead and then I can set up Mac 3. So change the kernel speed and I'm on my way. So that's the intention of the actual 
safety circuit which works. I've tested it on each of the drives and everything and it seemed to work absolutely fine for my application anyway. So um, I best go and change that Z axis to a more appreciable level when which it can actually handle itself. So let's go ahead and do that. So, I'm effectively done putting this enclosure together. Um, I'm really happy with the way that things have turned out. I'm really happy, I mean, the first book sheet, the logo in the corner, it looks really good. Um, you can probably hear the fans are whirling up at the moment. I think the enclosure temperature is slowly going up because I've been running for a while. Um, but yeah, I had some problems putting in the screws over here. I've actually lost the last screw over there. Um, it's fallen around the back. But I just had to clear up some burrs, so nothing too major. Um, I do have to swap out that breakout board, as I mentioned. So I'll go ahead and swap that breakout board, and that'll fix or hopefully fix some of the problems I've been having. But otherwise, this project is done. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, I'm really happy I could have you know, shown you some of the footage and everything. I think it's been good fun. In terms of going forward, I want to um, so the CNC machine that you've seen. Uh, actually make this enclosure. Um, I've actually cast all those parts in iron myself, so I've got some of the crucibles in the back over there, you probably can't see them. But anyway, so I want to cast the bed, the bed's going to be made out of cast iron, about 120 kilos, so it's going to be cast in three parts. Um, I'm going to cast the y-axis, I want to cast, um, I'm going to buy an ATC tool changer, I've got a servo motor, and I want to cast all the variable pulley systems, the actual brackets and everything, the whole all that together. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to doing that. I think that's going to be more exciting than, say, sitting in front of Eagle for seven months designing that breakout board. So um, hopefully I can take you along that journey. And if you want to see it, hit subscribe. And um, yeah, I can show you what goes on. Thanks for watching, guys.